Hi, my name is Devin, a thermographer here with T-Equipment, and today we're going to be talking about the differences between two great thermal imaging cameras, the Fluke TI-450 and the FLIR E95. So the Fluke starts at 8500 and the FLIR is 9999 or 10,000, whichever you prefer. First things first, let's look at the cases. So here the Fluke case is a pretty classic design for Fluke, very easy to find. Got that nice Fluke yellow. And then inside, you can see it's got a nice gasket and a soft case for holding all your camera and accessories. But you might notice it's quite a bit smaller than your FLIR case over here. which I think I might put a little bit more stock in myself. For a $10,000 camera, you get this nice overmolded Pelican case, and it's got foam cutouts that are specifically designed for your camera. And there's just more room for all of your accessories and extra lenses and whatnot. Fluke did a really nice job with all of their cases, but looking at the E95, it's kind of a stark contrast. For the cameras themselves, the sensor technology is a little bit different. The Fluke camera uses a 320 by 240 sensor, and that's a great sensor. It's going to do a wonderful job for most of your thermography needs. But FLIR is up the ante with the E95, and you know you do pay a premium for it. It, it is a good $1,500 more expensive than the Fluke TI450, but you get 464 by 348 pixels. Uh, it's a mouthful, kind of an odd number, but it does produce a much crisper image than the 320 by 240 sensor. Both cameras are going to have 30 millikelvin sensitivity on each of those pixels, so that really means 0 0.03 degrees Celsius, which is going to be more than adequate for all but the most scientific of measurements. Temperature range on the FLIR is going to be a little bit higher than the Fluke. The Fluke tops out at uh, around 2200, I believe it's 2192 degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas the Fluke is going to go, I'm sorry, the FLIR is going to go up, go up even higher, and that number is 2800. The frame rate on the Fluke camera is higher, it's 60 hertz. So 60 hertz is a great frame rate for taking video. It's usually faster than you need. Um, that's why FLIR's sensor comes in at a 30 hertz refresh rate. Looking at them side by side, you can, you can certainly tell the difference, but for most video, it's, it's not going to be important whether you have 30 hertz or 60 hertz. The screen size is another feature of the FLIR that is quite impressive. It has a four inch brilliant display with uh, what they call dragon tail glass. It's a full touch display. So you can, uh, you don't need to just navigate using the hard buttons, but you can if you need to or prefer that. The Fluke is going to have a three and a half inch display. I mean, it's just booting up now. Uh, so it's a little bit smaller. Also full touch screen, very nice menu structure. They redesigned their menu structure recently. So you're not going to be disappointed with the user interface on either the Fluke or the Flare. Oh, there it goes. It's booting it now. The software is a, a big point for a lot of technicians and thermographers. When you take an image, you want to be able to import it back into your PC, do an analysis, make some adjustments, and create a professional report. FLIR has done a really great job developing their software that's included with the E95. It's called FLIR Tools, and that's, that's a fully featured uh, radiometric analysis and reporting software. Uh, Fluke View, which is also complementary with the Fluke TI450, is a little bit less polished. It's, uh, it's a little bit older style. Um, so if reporting is the most important feature that you're looking for in a thermal camera, FLIR is going to be a great choice. 
Fluke will also do it, but it's really more geared towards your technicians on the ground versus uh, the reporting software after the fact. Some really nice advanced features come with each of these cameras. With the FLIR E95, you're going to, going to have Ultra Max, and that lets you have four times as many pixels on target. Uh, you effectively capture multiple images all at once, and then the software um, puts more pixels on, on an image. So you, you get, let's see, 464 by 348 times four. So that's going to be 928 by 696 pixels in your image. Fluke also has a um, technology like that. Uh, they, they call it super resolution. And with your 320 by 240 sensor, you're going to effectively get a 640 by 480 image when you're using that feature. Um, both the E95 and the TI450 have laser assisted autofocus. So as you can see, they both have two triggers. First one is to fire a laser and get distance to target. And then the camera automatically focuses. One really great thing that Fluke does that FLIR does not have uh, embedded in the E95 is what they call multi-sharp. So it's, it's akin to that, that laser sharp focusing, which is a, a fluke term, laser sharp. Um, but multi-sharp is when you have objects at different depths of field and you just want to capture one image with both in focus. And uh, for a thermographer, taking in focus images is really important because an out of focus image can't be fixed in post-processing. And when you're out of focus, your temperature readings are going to be off. So when you use the multi-sharp feature of the Fluke camera, uh, it actually takes multiple images at once, and then it cuts them up and slices them, and then puts them back together on camera. So you just get one image with different depths of field. So everything is in focus on one image. It's a, it's a really great technology that Fluke has put a lot of work into. Uh, other things you should keep in mind are the image blending technologies available on both the Fluke and FLIR cameras. So Fluke has what they call IR Fusion, and that is uh, where they change the opacity of the visual image uh, versus the thermal image. So there's, there's a blending that goes on. You can, have, you can have just thermal or just visual, or you can have 75% thermal, 25% visual. And that, that's a good way to take uh, some optical co context and put it into your thermal images. Uh, you, it's always going to take an optical and a thermal image, so you can, you can change it in your, in your report or go back and cross-reference the optical image with the thermal image but uh, it's just a blending. With FLIR, they have a proprietary technology called MSX. Now, MSX does the same thing. It takes an optical image and a thermal image, but then FLIR software uh, does some edge detection and embosses visual details on top of the thermal image. So that, that's a really cool thing that just FLIR cameras do. With the really high resolution, the image blending techniques aren't really quite as important. It's, it's more important on the lower end cameras uh, when you have an 80 by 60 sensor or even a 160 by 120 sensor. It makes a difference and FLIR definitely has an edge there. Um, but with sensors 320 by 240 or better, it's, it's really just a matter of preference. Uh, so those are the, the big spec differences between the Fluke and FLIR cameras, but let's take a look and see, see how they match up in the field. Let's take some pictures. Okay, so he, here we have the Fluke TI450 and the FLIR E95 side by side. I'm just looking at a breaker panel here. Uh, forgive me, they're, they're both meaty cameras. This is giving me an arm workout. But first impressions, 
The bigger screen on the FLIR camera is very nice. The Fluke feels a little bit sturdier in the hand, has a little bit nicer of a hand feel, but that could just be a function of having the wrist strap. Um, they're both, both very well made and have good ergonomics. Um, if I move them side to side, you get a sense for that refresh rate difference. You can see that the Fluke TI-450 with its 60 hertz refresh rate actually tracks better while you're scanning around. And there's just the very, very little noticeable delay on the FLIR with the 30 hertz resolution. Uh, the higher resolution on the E95 does give a crisper image, but for an application like this, it's really more overkill than anything else. It's just kind of interesting and nice to see that level of crisp detail. Let's uh, change some of the settings here and see how it looks with MSX and Fusion. So in this application, depending on the level of Fusion you use, it's really going to be comparable and will do everything you need it to do. The, the embossed details from the FLIR technology are a little bit crisper and clearer but the, the Fusion does just, just as nice of a job as giving you context with, uh, with labels, which is really the most important feature when you're looking at a blending technology. So as you can see, both the Fluke TI-450 and FLIR E95 are fabulous cameras. They're really top of the class. Uh, right now, Fluke has made an even more powerful camera, the TI-480, but that's beyond the scope of this particular video. Um, if you were on the fence between the two cameras and were really in a, in a tight budgetary space, uh, you might want to consider the TI-450 over the E95 because it does start uh, about $1,500 less. Um, but if you wanted to go even a step further, you could get the TI-400, which is effectively the TI-450, but without a few of the features that we've already talked about. It's not going to include multi-sharp, it's not going to include super resolution, and the sensitivity on that camera is going to be 50 millikelvins instead of 30 millikelvins. So something to consider if those were just a little bit out of reach or were more, uh, more interesting than important for your application. Uh, Fluke and FLIR both make excellent cameras. I would highly recommend either to any end user. Um, the FLIR camera is more expensive, has a few features that I think give it, give it an edge over Fluke. However, the Multi-Sharp is a really excellent technology. So that's our comparison between the FLIR E95 and TI-450. Again, my name's Devin. I'm a thermographer here with T-Equipment. Please give us a call if you have any questions. Thanks for watching our video.